Chordates are a lineage of animals within the Deuterostomia. Chordata is divided into three main groups, the subphyla tunicata, or urochordata, cephalochordata, or acrania, and vertebrata, or craniata. The tunicates, sometimes called sea squirts, are widespread in the marine world. They can be sessile or planktonic in lifestyle. Their name, tunicate, comes from their test or tunic, which is made of tunicin. Tunicin is similar to cellulose and is otherwise not found in the animal kingdom. Sea squirts, tunicates of the class Acidaceae, are simultaneous hermaphrodites, but can also reproduce asexually by budding. The tadpole-like larval stage is characteristic and has all the typical characteristics of the chordates. The common derived features, that is, synapomorphies, of the chordates include a rod-shaped support in the back, called the notochord, the post-anal finned tail, the neural tube, and the ventrally located heart. The affiliation of some animals to the chordates is best identifiable by the organization of their larvae, as many of these characteristic features of the chordates are reduced in the adult animals. Our first preparation object is the gold mouth sea squirt, Polycarpa aurata, which occurs naturally in the tropical Indo Pacific. The gold mouth sea squirt is solitary and does not form colonies. They can reach up to 10 cm in length and are bean shaped. They are whitish to cream in color with purple lines, occasionally with yellow, brown, or orange spots. The gold mouth sea squirt is a filter feeder, and its inhalant and exhalant siphons are golden yellow in color. It attaches itself to the substrate with a short, thick stalk. The present preparation was fixed in 4% formalin and has consequently lost some of its natural color. The inflow opening, also known as the branchial siphon, is at the top of the body. The outflow opening, or atrial siphon, on the other hand, can be found roughly in the middle on the side of the body. For the preparation, the sea squirt is detached from the substrate. It can be dissected with a sharp razor blade along the central axis from top to bottom with a simple incision, creating a cross-section of the specimen. Both halves can now be taken apart. The inhalant and exhalant siphons, as well as the pharyngeal basket, are immediately recognizable. The internal organs are surrounded by the mantle, which is composed of connective tissue and muscles, the epidermis, and the test or tunic, which is separate from the epidermis. The free upper end of the body is drawn down into two tubular extensions with the branchial siphon at the end and the smaller atrial siphon on the side. Both openings are contractile. The branchial siphon serves for ingestion, the atrial siphon for excretion. The branchial opening leads into the pharyngeal basket, which is lined with pharyngeal gill slits or stigmata. The atrial opening is to the peribranchial space. Within the pharyngeal basket, there is an open groove, the endostyle, or hypobranchial groove, an organ that is homologous with the vertebrate thyroid. 
The gut, which connects to the pharyngeal basket, begins with a short, narrow esophagus, expands to the stomach, describes an intestinal loop, and then pulls upwards as the rectum to end about halfway up the body in the anus. Food remains are expelled through the atrial opening. The body is protected by the tunic, which is usually strongly developed as a highly structured, fibrous and sometimes colorful excretion of the epidermis. In addition to tunicin, it consists of proteins, various carbohydrates, and up to more than 75% water. The epidermis is transparent and lies along the inside of the tunic. Our second preparation object is the European lancelet, or Amphioxus, Branchiostoma lanceolatum. It is a representative of the Cephalocordata, also sometimes called the Acrania. As the name suggests, these animals are skullless. The genus Branchiostoma is distributed worldwide and consists of several species. Branchiostoma lanceolatum lives in coarse sand and is found along coastlines of the northeastern Atlantic Ocean and even the Mediterranean and Black Seas. The preparation of the lancelet requires steady hands and a little patience. Such micro-preparation can also be carried out under magnification. This approximately 5 cm long, somewhat translucent, yellowish-white animal is named after the long body that is pointed at both ends and heart-shaped in cross-section. The body is laterally flattened, the dorsum is narrow, and the venter wider. Even to the naked eye, the arrangement of the muscles is visible. They are arranged in the dorsal part of the body in regular, closely spaced muscle segments, or myomeres. The myomeres are divided by thin walls, the myosepta, which are visible through the skin by a faint shimmering. They run in angular, anteriorly pointed lines. The gonads can also be seen very clearly. They are composed of little, oval, or square segments, of which there are usually 26 pairs arranged regularly along the body. To prepare the specimen, it is held in one hand. With a sharp razor blade, the specimen is then cut open along the abdomen, from the anus to the mouth. To do this, only very light pressure is exerted with the razor blade. It can now be placed in the preparation tray. Very fine insect needles are particularly suitable for pinning and unfolding the body. First, the lancelet is pinned into the bowl with the needles at the front and rear ends. The abdominal cavity is then opened by running the needles along the incision and then pinned in place such that the internal organs are visible.
Now we'll take a closer look at dissected specimens under magnification. Anteriorly, the oral cavity was opened with the sagittal incision. The opening is surrounded by a wreath of cirri. The mouth opens into the spacious pharynx, which serves for both feeding and respiration by the numerous gill slits along its walls. It is surrounded by the peribranchial space, and tapers posteriorly. We can see its structure of finely sloping clasps, the gill arches, between which the gill slits pass. The greenest yellow structure is the hepatic cecum, which is able to digest food by phagocytosis. It starts from the intestinal canal immediately behind the pharynx and extends into the peribranchial space. The intestinal canal is dilated at one point, the stomach, but is otherwise a long, straight tube to the anus. In the microscopic cross-section through the pharynx, the myomeres can be clearly seen on the left and right, particularly clear in the upper half of the specimen. Note that they do not align perfectly, but alternate. Just 